Good Tuesday morning, everybody. Welcome to the Jade and Stitches Show. Welcome to another crochet along. And uh, I hope you're all well on this lovely Tuesday morning. We are going to revisit our Soap Saver Scrubby. This is a tutorial uh, we did, oh my gosh, way back in the beginning. And we've linked the original tutorial down below. So if you want the recap, it's right there for you. We have a free pattern for this particular project on our website. Um, so Mr. and Stitches has made sure that um, there's some links in the chat. So if you want to uh, download the free pattern for this over on our pattern workshop page, you're more than welcome to. I thought it would be kind of fun to, again, give it a bit of a holiday twist. So I like to put a little bit of Christmassy stuff in the kitchen, the bathroom, the bedroom, stuff like that. Um, but I don't necessarily want to make it um, like an ornament that takes up space. This is especially handy if you have a very small little bathroom. Um, so I thought it might be kind of fun to try and make a peppermint <laughs> looking soap saver scrubby. Um, if I've got some time, I might add a little bit of a, an applique or something to the front of it, just sort of to give it a little bit more um, uh, relief, like a little bit more of a, a bumpy kind of textured feel. Because uh, the whole point of the Soap Saver Scrubby is that you dump little leftover bits of soap <clears throat> into the little scrubby sack. And then you can, you know, use it like a little wash uh, wash scrubber. Um, and you can use this at the kitchen sink and you can use it in the, the shower. I usually use mine in the shower. Um, they also make a nice little gift. You can give it with a bit of soap if you want. So that's what I'm up to today. So let's talk about materials. I've got some size 4 medium weight cotton yarn. This is 100% cotton. It's the type of yarn I would make a dishcloth out of. Um, you need around eh, 45 yards maybe for one scrubby and I'm going to evenly distribute that between my two colors. I've got some white and red here. A pair of scissors, yarn needle, stitch marker might be handy since we're kind of working in rounds. Um, you may or may not need to keep track of where the first stitch of the row is but it is helpful to have one of these on hand. And I'm using a smaller hook than I normally do. Uh, the original tutorial I used a 4.25 millimeter hook also known as a G or a six. This one is technically four and a half millimeters, which really is a neg negligible difference, um, but it's also known as a size seven. So that's the hook I'm using, G6 or a seven. And um, that's it. So welcome everybody. And uh, Mr. and Stitches is also in the house. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm sipping my coffee here. Yes, he's sipping his coffee. I would like to, um, before we get any further into this, thank a couple people. <laughs> thank you very much, Lynette, who uh, gave us a very generous super chat. It was her third super chat here on the channel. Thank you so much, Lynette. And also to Nico, the gifting ninja. Thank you for gifting a membership. Um, it looks like Alma won it. Congratulations, Alma. Welcome back to the family. Um, thank you both very, very much. Let's get into it. I think I'm going to start with um, my red yarn and then I'm going to uh, in add in the white yarn a little bit later on. And I'm going to carry the two colors kind of up the inside of the scrubber. Um, I'll kind of show you what I mean when I get to that point. I'm just going to try and find the inside end. There it is. So that's my, get my white yarn ready to go. That's the inside end. Okay. So I have my white ready to go. Here's my red. I can put my scissors and stuff to the side. All right, here we go. So to start a soap saver scrubby, we work from the bottom up. We're going to start with a slip knot and we're going to chain 11 to begin. And the reason I'm using the smaller hook today is because I want somewhat tighter stitches. Um, not so tight that, you know, you kind of warp the fabric, but I don't really want big gaps in between my stitches, so I'm using a smaller hook so that I have a, a more densely packed um, stitch fabric. So 11 chains to begin, and I'll just double check that. Yep, 11 chains. All right, here we go. From our chained foundation row of 11 chains, we are going to skip the first chain from the hook. That would be this guy right here. And we're going to work three single crochet into the next chain. So into the second chain from the hook, three single crochet. And then we're going to single crochet into each of the next eight chains. So we're starting at the bottom, working up to 
the very top. And then into the last chain, we're going to work three single crochet. And we're going to round the corner, so to speak, and then work up the other side of the foundation chain. So three single crochet into that last chain. It kind of turns the corner. And now we're going to work a single crochet into each of those eight stitches again. So the bottom of those eight stitches, it's the other side of the foundation chain. And I'm going to use the opportunity to single crochet over top of that little tail that began the whole thing so that I don't have to go weave it in later. Soap nuts! Yes, crocus! This would be a good little thing for people who use soap nuts. I, uh, I have a kind of a kind of know what those are. Those are those little things that come in a bag, right? Like you usually like they kind of Somebody explained soap nuts. I've heard of them. I've heard of them a couple times, but I don't think I've actually ever seen them. They come in like a little bag, right? They're like a little, um, and then you throw like one little nut in with the washing machine. Is that, is that how that works? I'm, I can't remember. Somebody explain that, please. <laughs> so I know. <laughs> All right. So that brings us back to the beginning. So this is the three single crochet that began the row. And unlike most of my working in the round projects, the original tutorial had us joining every row with a slip stitch. And I don't really have a problem with that. I think given that I want to try and um, change every row, uh, change colors every row, I might just continue with that so as to not confuse things. So I'm going to jump right into changing colors. So before I join that row, row one, I've got my hook underneath that first stitch. I'm going to change colors. I'm going to actually join the row with my new color. So I'm going to finish that row with white just to kind of get my new color joined in. So that's the slip stitch to join. Now I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to single crochet into the same place that I joined in. So that's the first stitch of what was row one. So I've just slipped in my new color, chained one, single crocheted in the same place. I've just dropped my red yarn to the back for now. And now I'm going to single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. And once again, I'm going to take the opportunity to just work over top of that short tail so that I don't have to go back and weave it in later. So single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. And it will pretty quickly turn into a little sack if your sort of the bottom of your bag isn't sort of turning up at the corners just yet, that's not a big deal. It will within the next row or two. It just means that you've got slightly looser tension and that's not really a big deal. So they look like acorns and yes, you throw a few in the bag to the wash for the, a few in a bag in the washer for your clothes. Okay. Soap acorns, that's cute. Soap nuts, soap nuts. <laughs> So I'm single crocheting in every single stitch all the way around. I'm establishing row two with my second color. And I think I'm just going to do this thing where every row, I as I go to join the row, so I'm back to the beginning. Here's my, my red color. That's the first one I had. If, instead of just joining with a slip stitch to that first stitch with the white, I'm going to drop white now, pick up red, and join with the red color. And then I'll chain one and single crochet in the same place that I joined. There we go. And now I just do this again. I just single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. So I'm going to just alternate colors, single crochet every single stitch all the way around for 16 rows in total. So I'm on to row three and I'm just going to drop one color, close a row with the next, and then work an entire row in that color. And I'm just going to get a nice little kind of peppermint 
soap saver scrubby bag go in here. Easy peasy, and it's kind of a fun way to change colors. If you're low on cotton yarns, this is another nice way to use up some of those cotton scraps because if you distribute the amount of yarn you need across a couple of different colors, you need less of each color, obviously. Uh, and this would look cute in a lot of different colored stripes. And all you're doing is carrying the yarn up the inside of the bag, and I'm going to show you what that looks like in just a second here. Welcome, welcome, if you're just joining us. And I want to make sure that I'm not using this. There's a, I don't want to use the false stitch. So when I get back to the beginning, let's see, there should be, there's my three. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So I don't want to use my false stitch. So when you get back to the beginning, you're going to see something that looks like a full stitch. This is the, the problem with, with joining every row with a slip stitch. You always end up kind of creating a stitch with the slip stitch. I'm going to drop my current color, switch to white, finish that row. Um, so if you don't want your bag to basically keep getting bigger, because you if you use the false stitch every single row, you're adding a stitch every row. So this is my last stitch right here. But you see when I joined my yarn or joined the row, I got this little guy here. It looks like a little kind of a false stitch. That's not actually a stitch. It's just the sort of the last thing, the, the stitch that was used to slip stitch the row together. So it's not actually a stitch I want to work into. So I'm going to mark the last stitch of the row with my stitch marker. And as you're carrying yarn, it's because we're only single crocheting, you see there's a little bit of a carry. That's that red yarn getting pulled up over top of the white. Now the white yarn is going to get pulled up over top of the inside of the red. It's happening on the inside of the bag, so it's really not that big a deal. We have two new membership milestones. Oh my goodness gracious. Let's see here. Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Nicole's been a member for 30 months. Thank you so much, Nicole. Nicole says, good morning, Jada and Mr. and Stitches. I love these soap savers. I have made several of them and everyone I make them for loves them. They make a great little gift. I know it seems like a small thing, but a bar of soap and something you can scrub off with in the shower or the kitchen sink is, uh, it's, <laughs> the older you get, the more these things are appreciated. <laughs> And uh, Crochet with Diane, who's been a member for 39 months. Thank you, Diane. Diane with a membership milestone says, I'm struggling with small small pom-pom for my mini hat. Oh, did you watch the tutorial, Diane? Uh, we made a pom-pom on our, on um, like I made one on my hands as opposed to using a pom-pom maker. Is that sort of the struggle or um, just adding it to the hat? Because I I found um, you, you want to make it, uh, you want to tie, I think the hardest part of making a pom-pom is tying the middle tie as tightly as you can so that your little bits don't want to come flying out. Um, so you might find wrapping the yarn around the middle a couple times and then pulling really tightly before you make the knot helps keep it, helps keep the center nice and tight. And then just trim it down. It's, it's uh, evening it out, keeping it trim. Um, and then you can join the pom-pom to the top of the hat using the two long tails that are left from the actual tying of the middle piece. I find that's typically how I join my handmade pom-poms. All right, I have my last stitch marked, so I'm just going to remove my stitch marker so that I don't accidentally stitch or crochet into what's the false stitch here. I'm going to slip my hook into the first stitch of the row, switch to red. Whoops. Let's try that again. Switch to red, join the row, tighten up on that hook, stitch a little bit, and then I'm going to go back in and mark the last actual single crochet of the row. And you can see this is the last single crochet I made because you can see the actual white of the stitch, the single crochet built into the row below. And you can see there's nothing below this. There's nothing below this little stitch. There's nothing connecting it to the bottom row. That's because this is the join. This is the false stitch. It's not real. <laughs> so we don't want to single crochet into it. So joined, 
chain one, single crochet in the same place that you joined, and then single crochet in every stitch around. So let's see here. I'm on row one, two, three, four. I'm on row four. This is row five that I've started. So I finished row four, I've started row five, and I need to make 16 rows of single crochet all together. And already I'm really quite pleased with the way this, this striping is looking. It's such a simple thing, but uh, it does make it look nice and, and uh, cheerful. Welcome everybody, if you're just joining us. We have a free written pattern for our Soap Saver Scrubby. It's available on the Pattern Workshop page of our workshop, so please avail yourself of that. Um, and Mr. and Stitches has, I think, the link directly to our Pattern Workshop page somewhere in the live chat, I think. We'll also make sure that it's in the description box if it isn't already after we finish up today's live. Um, and the original tutorial, we do have an original tutorial for this particular pattern. And we used a self-striping cotton yarn in that pattern. So that's another thing you can do. It's um, a whole lot quicker than changing colors every row. But like I said, if you're running out of yarn and you've got like some cotton scraps you want to use up, then this is a nice, a nice um, alternative. You can sort of make those scraps work for you. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to kind of make something that felt kind of Christmassy, a little, little peppermint, peppermint looking bag. So I'm just switching colors every row and I'm just carrying my yarn up the inside. So now I've got a definite amount you can sort of see. So here is the inside of that seam. Let me hook out of the way. Big and thank you to uh, Cheryl. Sorry to interrupt, but a big thank you to Cheryl who either renewed or upgraded membership. Hi, Cheryl. A big re welcome to you. Thank you. This is the inside of that seam. So because I, I drop a color and then I work a row with the next one and then drop that color and work a row with the next one, you can see the little carry that's been coming up. So every time I drop my yarn and then I pull it up to the next row to use it, it creates just a little bit of a carry on the inside. But because we're using single crochet, it's a short stitch. So the carry is short and it's on the inside of the sack. So it's not going to be seen. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to catch on anything. Um, so you don't have to worry about... Um, how that looks on the inside and you don't have to cut your yarn every single row you just drop the color you're not using leave it to the inside and then you pick it up um, again later for the next row and you can do this for as many colors as you like And I'm thinking, I also have some green cotton yarn here. I was thinking I might try and make a itty bitty witty little tree shape, like a super tiny little tree. Um, the smallest I can manage as a, like a little applique for the front. I thought that might look really cute. So that is my, my intention after I get my soap saver made today. So that's the last stitch with the white. I will now finish the row with a slip stitch, but using the other color. So I'm gonna drop white, switch back to red. Hello, Marie, thank you so much for picking up some patterns. I'm gonna chain one and single crochet in the same place. And I'm going to go back and once again, I'm gonna show this to you. So here is that little, if I pull on that stitch, here is that little stitch that's the false stitch. You see, it's not actually connected to anything. So there's the last real stitch, it's connected, and then there's this little floating thing, which is the slip stitch that joins the row, and it's not connected to anything. So I'm just gonna pull on that. Um, I don't want to accidentally mistake that as a stitch, so I mark my last stitch with a stitch marker so that I don't have to think quite so hard <laughs> when I get back around. And this way I won't accidentally add stitches to each row because I don't want this to grow. I want this to maintain the same stitch count all the way around with every row. And that's 22 stitches in each row. If I haven't mentioned that yet, I don't think I have. 22 stitches altogether. The exact stitch count isn't important in this little pattern. 
uh, but you don't want it to grow. So if you're at 21 or 24, it doesn't matter, but try to keep the same number of stitches in every single row. And the best way to do that is to avoid accidentally using that false stitch when you get all the way back around. So this is why I like my stitch marker. It reminds me where the last stitch of the row is. I can get him out of the way just now. I've got two stitches, one and then two. And then I want to join. I drop my red yarn, I'll get that out of the way, and I will pick up the white yarn and slip stitch to join that row. And now I'm going to work a row in white. Chain one, single crochet in the same stitch that I joined in. I'm going to go back and I'm going to mark that first stitch. Now the thing with this is that you're going to get a little traveling seam the seam kind of travels because we're joining every row with a slip stitch. So if you don't want a seam or a seam that travels, you don't join your row. You just work directly into what was the first stitch of the row with your next single crochet. So you won't have any false stitches, you won't have a seam, but I'm trying to do this exactly the same way we did uh, with the first uh, tutorial, just so there isn't any confusion, but you can make this pattern without using this slip stitch to join each row method. You can just keep working around and around and around in a circle and it will not change the look of the bag except that you won't have a seam so that's fine too and if you're thinking in terms of giving it as um, a gift and you want it to look just a little neater then um, maybe consider the continual single crochet method as opposed to joining each row with a slip stitch hello cheryl cheryl's been a member for 30 months thank you so much cheryl cheryl has a membership milestone and she says crochet addicts unite <laughs> Thank you for all your joy and ingenuity. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, crochet addicts unite. This is uh, the uh, one of the most cheerful little spots on the internet. I am sure of it. So I'm just gonna finish this row. Last stitch. And I drop the white and I pick up the red to finish the row. So I wanna join with my red yarn there we go. And you can sort of see that little seam. The seam is traveling there. I'm trying to pull my last color a little tighter. If I do that, then the, the, the little loop is smaller. So as I close the row, I, I take the yarn color I just dropped and I pull it as tightly as I can. Um, but this is going to be a little traveling, little traveling seam up the back. So if you don't want the seam, then do not join your rows with a slip stitch. Just work directly into the next stitch with a single crochet. So you can skip the whole join a row thing. But like I said, this was one of the first patterns we ever did quite a long time ago. If you work um, a continual single crochet in the round, you also um, don't usually run the risk of accidentally adding stitches, like because you have no false stitch to work into or to mistake as a regular stitch. So that's something you might want to keep in mind too. There are two ways to make this little sack, and either way is fine. And I'm going to pause after I finish this row and just see when how many rows I've done. I think I'm maybe about a third of the way done. Let's find out. Gifted membership from Nico. Thank you very much. Nico, thank you so much. And the winner is Deborah. Nico has gifted a membership, our little gifting ninja. Thank you, Nico, and congratulations, Deborah. Welcome back. All right, how many rows have I done here so far? That's row one down at the bottom. It's easy to count when you're changing colors every row. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I just finished row nine, so I've got seven more rows to do before I put in my little, um, what's that thing called? Drawstring, drawstring row. You have to make a little row of eyelets and then we'll make a little drawstring. And this thing will be ready to use at the sink or in the shower. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to use it yet. This one's definitely for me though. I wanted a little soap saver scrubby uh, that had kind of a Christmassy feel going on to brighten up the bathroom. Well, 
Welcome, if you're just joining us, we're making a Soap Saver Scrubby. And we're sort of revisiting the original tutorial. I am making it almost exactly the same way that I did the first time. I'm just striping every row. So I'm changing colors every row, just for some interest's sake. And uh, we have a free pattern over on our website, so please feel free to get that. And yeah. Chain one single crochet. I'm going to mark that last stitch. So that's the last one. I find if I get a little, um, I don't know how big the smallest uh, skein of cotton yarn is available where you may be, um, but here it's a little 50 gram ball. And I find that I can get one regular sized dishcloth out of it, or if I get two and I make like a two color dishcloth, I might be able to get um, two, maybe three out of those two balls together. Uh, so I always have a little bit of cotton left over after I've done a project. And I like these little tiny projects that can use up smaller bits of yarn so that they're still kind of useful you can still do some cleaning with them uh, but they don't you don't need an entire new skein of, of cotton yarn for it so uh, that also lets me have a lot of different cotton colors on hand in the stash which is kind of nice so you can really see there's that seam I've been trying to tighten up my little uh, join so that the seam is moving because I am joining with a slip stitch, chaining one and single crocheting in the same stitch that I joined in every single row. So that creates a seam and it creates a traveling seam because I'm not alternating where I start and stop uh, the row. But like I said, I wanted to make this exactly the same way as I did the original one. Um, I don't really mind that seam, but if you want to avoid that entirely, then do not join your rows with a slip stitch, chain one, single crochet. Just continue to single crochet in every single stitch around and around and around. We have two new membership milestones. Hello, Deanna. Deanna! Deanna says, Deanna member for six months. <laughs> Thank you, Deanna. I thought you might be busy today, Deanna. This is great. Deanna says, hi, getting my Jada Cal in before my busy trip. Oh, okay, good. You haven't left yet. Well, safe travels and thank you for being here. <laughs> And Lucy, Lucy's been a member for eight months. Thank you, Lucy. Lucy says you could make a little black belt with a gold buckle to match the Santa, uh, the Santa <laughs> TP roll holder. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'd make that all in red with a little black belt. I, I think I might have some black cotton. I think I've got some black re-up left over from, uh, from a Lion Brand video we did. Krista asks, would it be hard to show us a little poinsettia applique? A little tiny poinsettia? Tiny poinsettia. I don't think so. Would you rather see a poinsettia than a tree? Poinsetta I was going to make... versus a little, a little tree? Yeah, I was going to try a tree because I thought the green on the red and white might look good. Um, but the poinsettia, I could probably try a little poinsettia. I also want to ask, uh, Crochet with Diane is looking for that little part of the yesterday's live where you do the pom-pom do you remember if that was i would say that was more towards the end it would be of the at the video? end yeah when 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 you're working on the blue and white hat yeah um yeah so if you want to skip to that area we made the pom-pom at the end at the end because yeah. in the first hat you used uh pre-made pom-pom i think uh no in the well in the um in the the mini ski hat so in the mini ski hat tutorial I made a pom-pom because -pom I wanted a big fluffy one for on top of the hat and it should be at the end because I typically do things in the order that I put them together. So we made the hat and then we made the pom-pom to put on top of it. Um, and then, but because in the original little mini hat uh, ornament, we just used store-bought ones. Should we do a poll on poinsettia ver versus tree? Sure. So after I finish this row, I'm going to pause and see where I'm at. Stitch count wise, row count wise. Uh, 
Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Melissa's been a member for six months. Melissa has a membership milestone. And Melissa says, so happy I made today's live. We are too. Glad you could make it, Melissa. <laughs> yes, it's um, it's funny. We don't, obviously, we're, we're all on completely different schedules. So it's really great when we can catch up with each other. <laughs> All right, how many rows in am I? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I have three more rows to go, and then we will do the little um, eyelet row at the top. Mr. and Stitches is getting a pole going, it looks like. So I feel a little more confident. I don't feel like I need my stitch marker to mark out the last stitch of the row any longer. I kind of know the I know what to look for. This is uh, looking quite fresh. I like that. Nice red and white. I could have made the stripes. Uh, I could have made the stripes thicker. Like I could have made two rows of red and then two rows of white or. Maybe two rows red, one row white. That would have looked kind of neat too. So you can vary up how many rows of color you do, especially if you're using up scrap yarn. Let's join that one. And another row. Well, that's good to hear, Melissa. Everybody, and that's another thing, our work schedules all keep changing. Mr. and Stitches, did you get the pole going? I can't tell from here. Yes, the pole. The pole is up and running. It might not work for everyone because we are experiencing a little bit of glitching. <laughs> this is hilarious. We have 76 votes and it's split 50-50. <laughs> we need the lurkers. Come on, lurkers. Are you kidding? That's funny. This is right down the middle. My goodness. So, Poinsettia applique versus a, I put evergreen tree. I assume you were thinking of like a Christmas like tree Like a little style. Christmas tree, yeah. 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 Okay. Someone mentioned snowflake. That would also look good. Yes, that would look cute too. Um, I'm going to try and make. Wow, this is a real, real split here. Evergreen tree is taking a slight lead. I'll leave that up for a few minutes. Yeah. I think I'm at 16 rows. I'm going to double check here at the end of this row. So looks like I'm at 16. I'm going to join this row with my other color. All right, where am I at? One. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, that's row sixteen. Now I'm going to do a drawstring row. So this is a little uh, row of eyelet so that we've got something to run our drawstring through. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to single crochet into the same place that I joined in. If you're on a big screen TV, you won't see the pole. You can only see poles on your phone or tablet or computer. Um, I'm going to chain two, skip two stitches, and single crochet into the next stitch. So chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next stitch. And you'll also, you might have to tap on it. It might be just a little blue bar on the chat box. You might have to tap on it to see it. Chain two, skip two, single crochet into the next stitch. Chain two, 
chain two, skip two, single crochet, chain two, skip two, single crochet. Now, I think I have one more row of finishing after this. And normally I would be switching back to white, but I think I'm going to keep it in red, which means I'm done with my white. And I'm going to chain two and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet I made. I'm going to snip my white yarn. And I'm going to make my drawstring white instead so that it'll stand out against all the red. And now I've got a little finishing row to do. I'm going to chain one single crochet in the same place that I joined in. And now I'm going to work two single crochet into each of these little uh, chain two spaces. So two single crochet into the chain two space and a single crochet into the single crochet stitch from the previous row. Two single crochet into the space and a single crochet into the stitch. So I'm not changing the stitch count. I'm just making sure that the chain two spaces get two single crochet and each of those stitches gets one. And that just, just finishes the top off nicely. And I'm keeping it all red because I started with red. I think I want to finish it with red and then I'm going to give it a white drawstring and the drawstring will look kind of stand out against it. And as soon as I'm done with this and I've woven in my tails, we'll call the poll and we'll see what little applique I'm going to try and make. I'm going to try and make it super, super small. All right, slip stitch and I can fasten off. There we go. I'm going to weave in my tails now, so I'm just going to turn this inside out for a minute. Nice stiff cotton. There we go. Inside out. And you can see there's my little seam where all of the color was getting carried up the edge. It's really not that messy because we're using single crochet. So let's get my tails woven in here. I'm going to weave in the white one first. It's pretty tight. The stitching is nice and tight, so I'm not too worried about my tails coming undone, but I am leaving them a little on the long side so I can weave them back and forth a couple times. I'm going to do this white one first. There we go. Maybe a couple more in this direction. So the pole was neck and neck the entire time. It was literally 50, 49, 50, 51. But uh, we ended up with 50 evergreen tree, 49 poinsettia. Wow, that was close. Okay. Yeah, 117 <laughs> votes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I will continue with trying to make in a little evergreen tree and... Uh, Maybe I'll try to do the poinsettia too if we have time, why not? Okay, so that's the red one, or I should say the white one. Now let's get the red one woven in. And we will go underneath these stitches. There we go. Okay. And back. All right. Okay, so I'm going to turn this back right side out. Nice and stiff. Very good. All right, so that is my little soap saver scrubby sack. Now I'm going to chain a quick uh, drawstring for it, which is basically just a chain of 45, eh, 40 to 45 chains. And that is it. And then we will make a little evergreen tree applique. I'm going to try and make it as tiny as I can. All right, 
right, that's 40. I think that's enough. And just pull that nice and tight. I'll trim both my ends so that they're roughly the same size. There we go. And let's weave this guy in. Uh, I'll do it out the front, I guess. So all you have to do is take your little drawstring and weave it through those chain two spaces on the eyelet row. And then you can safely lock some soap into that. There we go. So that's all ready to get tied up. Now, let's try and make a little miniature evergreen tree, something, something super, super small. So I'm picturing an, an, a, like a little, a little applique that basically fits right here, like super small. I'm gonna use the same, actually I think I have an even less yarn over here. I'm gonna use the same hook. This is the same weight of yarn. It's also cotton, it's all the same stuff. And um, I'm going to try, so it would be very easy to make like a little triangle with a little stem, but I'm gonna actually try and make just a little bit of like, a little bit of, um, I don't even know how to show you, like little boughs. Like I'm gonna try and sort of just make it look a little bit more like an actual tree, like a Christmas tree, like that car cartoon version of a Christmas tree. Let's see how I do. So will I start? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna try and make this in a mirror image fashion. So let's see how I go. Uh, I'm gonna cover one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven rows. So I'm going to chain eight. So here's my thinking. I am going to try and do down one side and then do the exact same thing mirror image up the other side. Uh, it's an experiment. I'm going to skip the first chain from the hook, slip stitch into the next one this being the top point of my tree, single crochet into the next and half double crochet, no, double crochet into the next. Okay, then I'm going to chain one and slip stitch into the next chain half double crochet into the next chain and then double crochet into the next chain and treble crochet into the last chain. And I'm gonna see if this looks even remotely like half the size of a tree. Oh yeah, there's a bit of a tree shape going there. So that's half the tree. That's not bad. Let's see where this goes. Oh my goodness. Barbara, thank you so much for picking up a pattern. I'm going to slip stitch across. So I'm, I'm going to slip stitch across the bottom of this treble crochet. If this doesn't work. I will try coming at it from a different pers perspective. So I'm just slip stitching across the loops, slip stitching into the first foundation chain. And then I'm going to do the whole thing in the opposite direction going the other way. So I'm going to chain four to mimic, chain four, I'm gonna chain four to mimic my treble crochet. I'm gonna double crochet into the next chain and half double crochet, oh, that might be too much of a gap. Okay, I'm gonna chain three. My treble crochet is a little, little shorter than I thought. So I'm going to chain three, then I'm going to double crochet into the next stitch, half double crochet into the next stitch, and slips, chain one and slip stitch. Chain one and slip stitch into the same place. Okay. Then I'm going to chain one and half double crochet into the underside of that other half double crochet from the other side and then single crochet and then slip stitch and let's see how I did. 
and another chain one up the top. So yeah, that's a bit of a tree. That's a bit of a tree shape, eh? Let me get my hook out of the way. You can really see it. Yes, that's a very simple little tree shape. As I sew it down, it will be a little more obvious. And you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I don't have a lot of tail left, so I think I'm just going to slip stitch right down the center to make it look like um, to make it look like there's kind of like a trunk. Hello, Aunt of Angels. Aunt of Angels has been a member for six months. Thank you. And she says, don't streams like this feel all Christmassy. <laughs> they kind of do. <laughs> I'm going to slip stitch into sort of down the center. It's kind of like it's kind of like um, surface slip stitching. So I'm slip stitching into each of what was those, like in between those foundation chains, all the way down the center. And then I will sew this on using another length of green cotton. Uh, but this kind of creates this surface chaining down the center kind of covers up any gaps that you might have if you kind of do this and you've got some gaps. And it kind of looks a bit like like, like a trunk. Um, yeah. And then out the bottom. And I need like a little... I'll just... Have I got any... Nothing left. So I'll just fasten off down there. Okay. So that's my little tree. When I sew this on, I'm going to make it look a little bit more tree-like. <laughs> I'm going to weave my short tails in. And I will sew it down using another length of green. I just had this this little tiny scrap of green. I figured I would use it up. And that seems to have worked out fairly well. So that's first one. And then otherwise I would, you know, if I were you and you were making this along with me, try to leave as much, leave a tail off your the last stitch so that you can sew it down with it. Um, because that way you don't have to anchor your sewing yarn with a new knot and I like to try to avoid that when I have when I can okay so here's my little tree what do you think guys how'd I do does it look kind of kind of like a Christmas tree I give it a nine out of ten you give it a nine mm -hmm. eh? it's pretty good not bad not For bad a small little uh, makeshift tree it's uh it's gonna go <laughs> Definitely looks like a little tree. I, th I think it worked. It was about the right size. That's the size I wanted. I think it works. I think it works. Okay, so let's sew it down now. So I'm going to use a length of yarn here. Now, how much? Uh, maybe 60 centimeters, 24 inches-ish. And I'm just going to anchor it on the back. Mm -hmm. I'll start down here. I'm going to anchor it on the back. I'm just going to slip my my needle underneath a stitch and I'm going to tie it with an actual knot. Like this is not pretty. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's going to be hidden anyway. But I'm going to knot it a couple times just so it doesn't want to come undone. And that's how I'm anchoring my sewing yarn. There we go. And I'm going to position it. I'm going to hold it down with my thumb and forefinger. And I'm going to start out here. And I'm going to just start kind of, I'm going to surface sew it. Now you don't have to surface sew. You can sew right back and forth through that first panel like the front panel of the soap saver, but keep a finger in there just so you don't accidentally, um, you don't accidentally sew through both pieces. Like you want to kind of keep your fingers in there or a piece of cardboard or something. That'll help keep you from accidentally sewing through. There we go. So that's And then a couple of stitches along the trunk.
And I pause every so often just to make sure that I'm kind of everything's still kind of in the place that I want it. It's not sort of skewing one side or the other. And the more stitches you get in, the less it moves and the quicker it gets towards the end. So <laughs> we uh, we would like to see some dimensions. Some what? Dimensions. Dimensions? Measurements. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Let me just finish this and I will give you some measurements. That's how tall? How wide? Well, it's about the size of a bar of soap, um, but of course it's not meant for a full bar of soap. It's meant for the leftovers. The leftovers, but uh, so you it don't is, waste those little pieces. Yeah, it's about the size of a of a bar of soap. Um, so let me just pause and grab my measuring tape. This is three inches wide by four and a half inches long, or seven and a half centimeters wide by about. 11 and a half centimeters long and of course it's um, you know it's a bag so you should be able to, to fit an entire soap bar in there but like I said it's meant for the little bits and pieces and the little tree applique is roughly two and a quarter inches tall or five and a half centimeters ish almost six centimeters tall and at its widest it's about four centimeters or an inch and a half And I'm just working my way up. And I want this piece of my tree to stick out kind of evenly. So I'm going to kind of tug it into place with my needle and then I'm going to make sure it, I sew it there. Uh, so let's see here. There we go. <laughs> and a nice little tight, neat and tidy point up at the top. There we go. And now down the other side. And the, I haven't managed to sew through both pieces yet, so that's a good sign. I'm kind of half keeping my fingers in there and, and half not, but I am just trying to grab like the top facing loop of the bag as I stitch through the edge of the applique. This one's meant for only Christmas showers. Christmas. <laughs> Can only use this scrubby at Christmas time. Well, this was kind of the idea. I thought, <laughs> I, I again, I like to have some themey stuff in the kitchen and the bathroom, but I don't always want it to be an actual ornament or something because I want, I don't want to take away the space. Like if you've got a small little bathroom or a, you know, maybe you've got a small kitchen, you're dealing with small space. You 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 don't really have the space to be putting extra stuff in your way you know even if it's nice decorating it's it's uh, it's kind of in your way so i i like to have useful things that are on theme and this feels like one of those and a couple more stitches here I think that's it. That's all. Got a little tree on the front. Nice. All right. So I had way more sewing yarn than I needed. That's fine. I will just tuck that away into the mini scrap basket and I will make myself a little knot here at the side and then tuck that in. Weave it up through a couple of stitches 
and then trim whatever's left. Not too worried about that. There we go. All right. Kelly has a question. Would your candy cane plushie be suitable for a toddler? Um. I have two friends and both have baby girls. I wanted a gingerbread man, but candy cane is good too uh -huh. that would be the big candy cane stuff toy the big candy cane stuff toy yeah um okay before you answer that yes we just had a mega gifted membership oh my gosh nico gifted 20 memberships oh my gosh nico basically just we have a invited the entire of oh. new members oh my gosh nico <laughs> Holy cow. Um, oh my gosh, I can't even read all these. Thank you so much, Nico. Good Lord, the entire chat just basically became members. <laughs> oh my gosh, welcome, Colleen, Kelly, Jay, Kathy, Catherine, Michelle, Mary Ann, Adina, Deborah. <laughs> Holy cow. Garden lover, Jane, Bobby, Vicky, Bonnie, Dream in the Garden. Oh, that's so sweet. Tammy, Lisa, <laughs> Cheryl. Jessica, Catherine, holy cow, welcome everybody. Welcome to the family and thank you, Nico. Oh my gosh, Nico's literally Santa Claus. <laughs> Maybe that's who's been hanging out with us this whole year. Nico it's, the it's, Santa Claus ninja. It's Santa. Um, okay, so there's my little Christmas soap saver scrubby uh, with that little, I think that applique worked out okay. That's a real little scrappy tree, but I mean, it gets the idea across. Looks like a little cookie. So going back to the candy cane yes, question. Yes, going back to the candy cane question. Um, huh, if, so toddlers like to stick things in their mouths. Um, so it's very important that um, when you are making something for a toddler, you've always got it in your head that they are going to try and swallow whatever you give them. <laughs> it's like their MO. Um, if you crochet something, make sure it's using um, a yarn that it doesn't, um, doesn't, have a lot of little bits or fluffs or uh, easily bro breakable fibers just so they're not, you know, swallowing acrylic fiber or swallowing um, anything like that. I mean, I know that a lot of clothing is like that, but um, we want to try and do our best when we ourselves are making it. So um, you want to use a bulky weight, a super bulky weight yarn for those uh, plushy um, candy canes. I used the Bernat blanket yarn and it's pretty good stuff. I don't feel it only really wants to come apart when you cut it. So the little tiny bits that want to come off, come off at the end when you snip it. Um, but if you have access to super bulky weight size six yarn, um, that is really, really smooth and doesn't want to like, like maybe t-shirt yarn or something, you might want to consider something like that. You want to crochet with a hook that gives you a nice tight tension so that you don't have a lot of spaces between your stitches. And then you can stuff it with, if you're not comfortable using pillow stuffing, like that polyester fiber fill, because you're worried that maybe little bits might want to come out between the stitches, um, then chopped up t-shirt, uh, chopped up sock, that kind of fabric, like a, a knit jersey fabric, uh, like a t-shirt is made from, or a pieces of non-fraying like cotton um, flannelette, polar fleece. That is all great stuff to chop up and use as stuffing because it won't easily come out between the stitches. It will wash very easily and dry. Um, and it also makes it kind of nice and firm. And if they do like kind of, you know, chew on it or whatever, um, little tiny bits of fiber do not come off of polar fleece or um, off of fabric that doesn't fray. So that's my option for stuffing. Um, and it'll also make them a pretty hefty feeling candy cane. Now you don't have to use the size six super bulky weight. In fact, I made a smaller one. Let me grab it. I made a, a smaller version of that candy cane just using regular size four medium weight. Now this was uh, Red Heart acrylic. So um, again, I would opt for maybe like a t-shirt yarn. Um, I have t-shirt yarn, let me grab that too. <laughs> um, so this is some t-shirt yarn that I've got. It's called, this one's called Maker by Burnett. 
and I'm going to hold it here. You can see that it is, it's basically a knit, like a knit um, jersey. It's extremely soft. It's very, um, and it doesn't fluff. It's basically like knitting with t-shirt or crocheting with t-shirt. So I would probably recommend using a t-shirt style yarn, either Maker or Spaghetti or um, Fettuccine or any of the kinds that you can find that's that knit uh, t-shirt looking material because um, they can chew on this and it can go into the washing machine and it's um, not going to fluff on them. But because it is a smaller weight, um, like I did with this one, I think I used a five and a half millimeter hook, uh, an I-9, but you can use any size hook you want because the gauge isn't super important. It's still going to be a nice great big um, candy cane and uh, you don't want spaces showing up between your stitches. So that's my recommendation if you want to make these for toddlers because um, it will be safe. <laughs> There's not any little pits, bits to, to kind of pull off and swallow. Um, but this is also probably uh, won't feel weird in their mouths if they're chewing on it, like that t-shirt style yarn. And just so you know, um, this is nine and a half inches tall or about 24, 25 centimeters at its tallest. So that's using the smaller hook and the smaller yarn. If you do find like a super bulky t-shirt style yarn um, and you use like a six and a half or seven millimeter, like a, um, a K hook or something, then it'll be even bigger, which is fine too. Uh, so I hope that helps. Um, those would be really cute as little <laughs> twin gifts. <laughs> Susan has a nice idea. Can mm -hmm. you attach little star appliques to the ends of the drawstring. Yeah. That, that would look cute. That would look really cute. Mm -hmm. Absolutely you could. Yeah. Um, it's little star appliques. Um, anything that continues to be cotton, you know what I mean? It would, it would look really cute. Yeah, anything really. <laughs> Any little applique. Um, if you're going to use it for a scrubby, you want it to be soft. <laughs> no yes. beads, no wooden beads. I agree. That I might agree. hurt. Um, I, I'm going to just try making a little poinsettia now that it was mentioned. I'm going to just try here because um, I've got the red yarn. So uh, <laughs> that's the little tree. If I was going to make a, a poinsettia that's equally the same size, um, this is how I think I would do it. So I'm going to start with a slip knot. I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five and give myself a ring so a little center to work into uh, i will see how this goes so and then i'm going to chain five yeah i'm going to slip stitch into the second chain from the hook single crochet into the next chain half double crochet into the next chain slip stitch into the last chain and then slip stitch into the ring to make like a little tiny pointed, um, a little pointed leaf. Let's try another one. So chain five, one, two, three, four, five. It's difficult working small with a thicker yarn, but slip stitch into the second chain from the hook, then a single crochet, then a half double crochet, Finish it with a slip stitch in the last chain and then slip stitch back into the chained ring. Yeah, I think I'm getting somewhere. Chain five. Uh, what do you think there usually are? Like six, eight? How many leaves typically on a little poinsettia? One, two, I guess there's a whole bunch, isn't there? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Slip single, half, slip, and slip. What kind of yarn do you think would be the best for outdoor use, to last outdoors? Um, if you're going to put it outside in the winter, um, we, so when we did that uh, a few live streams ago, we made, I upsized that snowflake pattern that we had, and I made one using that macrame cord 
I have it outside. I actually put it outside and we've had several storms <laughs> since then. It still looks good. And it still looks Same good. Same color. It's still in, intact. It's had all kinds of wind and rain and snow. And... Um, I think it's nylon. So, uh, and nylon is kind of what they make a lot of flags and stuff out of. So I recommend nylon. Um, I think I've got a, I think I got something going here, guys. Might be a little bit. Uh, than... Krista says five question mark, five leaves, seven says Joanna petals. Let's go with. One, two, three, four. I've got five so far. Let's do a couple more just to sort of fill it in. I think seven. I think I like the idea of seven. I like the odd seven, number. Yeah. So that's six. One more. All right, so that's seven little petals. So I'm slip stitching back into the, now that's, gee, that's not too bad. It needs a little something in the middle now, though. So um, I'm just going to fasten that off. I won't worry about leaving a tail. All right, so nice and tight. So here we go. We've got, I'm going to pull out my points and pull out the fattest part of the little petal. All right, so there's my little poinsettia. This one, for some reason, the point doesn't want to come out. There we go. Okay, so that's my little poinsettia. Now I feel like it would probably need a little something like in the center. Um, it's a little bigger, like that's about as small as I could make it. Ah, you know what, that would look, that would look just fine, wouldn't it? I mean, it covers the whole kind of back side of it. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and then, you know, you could put some little yellow, uh, like French knots in the center of it sort of thing when you sewed it down. Yeah. Uh, or beads. Let's say you were making a bunch of these to put on a wreath. Then you could put some, some golden beads in the middle. I got any yellow beads. Yeah. Maybe kind of pile them up so that it looks like a, yeah. Yeah, that looks, that looks like a poinsettia, eh? Like one in the middle. A couple of green leaves out the bottom, says Vivi, I think. You get a 10 out of 10 for this one. I, I would say, On yeah. On the fly poinsettia, a couple 10 of... out of 10. Green, the, the green leaves are roughly the same shape, right? <laughs> three, so, I would use three beads. So the let's, four looks too even. Let's try... Um, I don't think you'd want beads on a scrubby, though. No, no, I'm just thinking in terms of, like, it being... I'm, I'm, I'm always thinking of the multiple, multiple uses of something. Like, if you were making a wreath and you wanted some little, like, applique... Like, you wanted some, some little mini poinsettias to add to the wreath. I'm just thinking of ways that you could, like... You oh, you could. Says, uh, Susan says try French knots. Yeah, yeah. If you were sewing it down, to beads. yeah. If you were sewing it down, I would use the French knots in okay. the center. Sure. Um, but if you were, you know, going for something a little fancier, I mean, obviously you probably wouldn't use like cotton scrub yarn, but 
Um, you could use beads if you were using it as something on a little fancier. Let's see if I can get some, I'm just going to weave this tail in and then I'm going to add some, some leaves, some leaves. Maybe I'm going to kind of work off the back of it. Rita also gives you a 10 out of 10. Thanks Rita. <laughs> Joanna says you could try five beads, but, or do French knots, but do French knots. I, I would say obviously French knots if this is going if you're on a using scrubby. It for the scrubby. Um, but if you're using it for like a decorative purpose for something else that can handle beads, then the beads would might be a lot more fun. Mm-hmm. Gift bag. Yeah, gift bag. Um, you could use a much nicer yarn, obviously. Can you pull the little scrubby over a bit so we can see it? It's kind of yeah. Oh now your hand's blocking it. Gee, there it we is. go. All right. <laughs> I want to see what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to ignore that tail for now. All right, so I'm going to, well, maybe I'll finish. Finish weaving that in. Trim anything that's left. Yeah. And I might put this on another soap saver. Okay, so there's my little flowery poinsettia. Let's add some green leaves underneath it. Uh, I'm going to build right onto the back of it. So I'm going to start with a slip knot on my hook. I'm going to flip to the back of my poinsettia. And I'm going to slip my hook in underneath. So I'm going to slip my hook in underneath a couple of the loops of what was one of the foundation. Like, like see how... When I come back and I slip stitch to join a leaf, it creates that little stitch in the center. I'm just going to slip my hook underneath that and slip stitch with my green yarn to join. Okay. So again, this is the back. It's not going to show. So I'm going to make a leaf. Um, two, three. Or now question do I make the leaves the same size as my petals just green or do I make them a little bit bigger let's go a little bit bigger <laughs> we're laughing now because now the chat is blocking the bag on the TV oh, for heaven's so it sakes. doesn't matter where you put it <laughs> it's being blocked somewhere that's okay all right I'm gonna, chain, I'm gonna chain I'm gonna chain six need bigger, for the leaves. we need a bigger screen I'm gonna chain six for the leaves I'm going to single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, and then single crochet to finish it. So, and then do I want to go this way? And then I'm going to slip stitch underneath the next stitch along the center. On the back side so that these leaves are a little bit bigger and they kind of stick out underneath. So I'll do two, three, four, five. So I'm chaining six with the green and then I skip the first chain from the hook and I go slip stitch, single, half, double, and then I finish with a single so it's just a little bit thicker at the base than the petals were. And then I switch to the next stitch along the back. I slip my hook underneath it and I slip stitch to anchor it. And now I'm going to have wider leaves kind of sitting out underneath my poinsettia. So I think that's going to work. Kelly would like to know if you ever have plans to do a gingerbread man stuffed toy. Two, three, four, five, six. A gingerbread man stuffed toy. Kind of um, like the um, the candy cane, you know? Yeah. Well, I, 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 I 
I assume I know what she's, you know, means by gingerbread man. <laughs> Everyone is really impressed with your designing on the fly skills. Oh, thanks, guys. Um, yeah. Oh, as... and who mentioned? Someone asked if you would do in post instructions for it. Yes. Ah, you know what, guys? I'll do that one better. I'll make a little mini video. A little mini, a little mini. Uh... Yeah. Okay. I'll shoot that this afternoon and see if we can get it up sometime this week. Mini tutorial. Just a little up. quick tutorial. Yeah. Why not? Just so you don't have to come sort of scrolling back through this. Click the like below. button if you'd like to see the Poinsettia tutorial. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if it works out, absolutely. So I finished that and then I slip stitch underneath the next stitch along. So I'll probably end up doing as many leaves as there are uh, petals or possibly one fewer. I don't know. We'll see. So slip, single, half, double, and you know maybe in the uh, in the actual video I'll just use a slightly nicer yarn just so it looks a little better. Um, I'm just using this because it's what I had on the table in front of me, and I'm working with cotton today. But uh, if you wanted to make this a pretty little, yeah. 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 Yeah, I think that, yeah, I don't know. Let me get this finished. We'll ask the chat what they think. Oh, yeah, let me let uh, me get it finished and then rate I'll... Rate it uh, between 1 and 100. This is, it's also, you know, when you use like a... A crummy like not crummy but if you use like this is a this is a workhorse yarn this cotton it's designed to get busy in the sink you know it's not super pretty so I'm just I'm sort of looking at this picturing what it would look like um, made out of a really nice yarn so I'm chaining six for the leaves and skip the first chain slip stitch into the second and then single, and then half, and then double, and then single, and then slip stitch under here, and one, two, three, four, five, I've got six, I'm going to make one more leaf, so... does make for a nice sort of um, substantial feeling little applique. You know, this would be the kind of thing where it'd, it'd be cute, like I said, done in a nice a nice yarn and used like on a hat, or you could make some and put them on a wreath. If... Um, can you pull out the little mouse? Is the little mouse still available? The pink one, I mean? Yeah. So, hang on one second. I'm just slip stitching to join back where I joined my yarn. The little mouse pin from earlier. Um, the the pink mouse. I've got the I've got the other mouse. I don't have the pink one. The pink one's in the bedroom, sitting with its new. I will get the pink mouse. Okay. So. I feel like the leaves. Oh my! Let me just pull them out. You have to have the little oh. Christmas mouse. Christmas mouse. <laughs> this is with her little party hat and her antlers. She can inspect. Uh, so there we go. That's um, that looks that looks okay. I'll just weave that tail in underneath for now. Get it out of the way. If you were going to make this an applique, um, you might only have to sew it down around one round of things, like maybe like sew it. If you add the leaves like I've done here, then just sew the leaves down, but leave the petal of the flower kind of out. So it's sort of a, got more of a three-dimensional feel going. Um, but as this stands, um, I might add this to a dishcloth because it's just a little bit bigger now that it's got, um, 
it's got the leaves in it. And I'd sew it down, say, with just using the leaves and then put that on a dishcloth or a tea towel. And um, it could function as sort of an extra little bit of scrubbing power. That's not bad. I feel like it could use a... Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you for picking up a pattern. I feel like it, it definitely is going to want like those little yellow, um, like a little yellow center or like some, if you were going to um, sew it down using the cotton, some yellow French knots in the center just to kind of give it that that middle. But yeah, I, I, I'd say that's that looks Poinsettia-esque. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, it's small. I mean, when you work small, it's difficult and, and you use like a size four weight yarn, it's kind of tricky to get like that real, uh, sharp definition, but I don't know. I don't think that's too bad. I'm going to pull out my little points to my leaves. Fridge magnet. Fridge magnet. Yeah. That would be my version of Christmas decor. Just um, slap that on the fridge. Done. Seven or eight leaves. I've done seven. I've done seven petals and seven leaves. I'm wondering if like eight would be better. I don't know. I'll give that a little bit of thinking. Um, guess we need a photo of a real one. Well, I mean, but, if you uh, look at a real poinsettia, there's like a zillion I mean, leaves. on the fly. Yeah, like there's a, a poinsettia has got a whole bunch of red leaves and then a whole, or a bunch of red petals and then a whole bunch of red leaves or green leaves. Well, we'll ask the chat. What do they think? Does that look like a poinsettia? Oh, like Nico suggesting a pin on a scarf or a beanie. Yeah, that's a great idea. But again, made using nicer yarn if you're going to use it like as actual decoration on clothing or something. I think, um, I mean, I like the seven. I might try one off camera with eight and see which one I think I like a little bit better. I like eight because that's kind of that balanced thing, but then I like seven because I like odd numbers. So um, I'll figure out which one looks best and I'll and I'll do up a quick little little tutorial um, that we'll, we'll put up later. That way you can, you know, like I said, see it better. And I'll use a nicer a nicer yarn just so it looks a little crisper. Nico asks, how do you keep the leaves from curling up? Uh, well, this is cotton. So um, whenever I'm finished with something, I always go around and I kind of like, I pull out the points and then I pull out the middles just to kind of make that nice and wide where I want it to. It's kind of like blocking on the fly. Um, you, uh, you know, when you, when you make something, don't be afraid to manhandle it. You made it. <laughs> <laughs> make it look the way you want and if it doesn't want to stay that's what that's when you might want to do a bit of blocking or something but cotton I find is like cotton fibers are extremely uh obedient if you're if you are into quilting at all and you use quilt cottons you don't even have to use an ironing board half the time you can just fold your fabric in half and like run your nail across the seam the corner of the fold and it'll flatten it and then when you open it again you've got like a sharp um, edge just like you you would if you folded paper and it's the same I find with cotton fibers in yarn you can just tell them where to sit and they will stay <laughs> I kind of like this I'm also considering like what this might look like with a like a big button or something in the center um, I like the idea of uh, turning it into a pin and adding it to a hat or a scarf or something yeah yeah not bad Uh, if I was going to put this on a dishcloth, and I just might, I think I would, I would tack it down with yellow cotton in the middle, um, and use some some knots just to approximate that because I like that yellow dot in the middle. I feel like it really just says poinsettia. But if I was going to make this something fancy using nicer yarn, I would definitely use like a yellow bead or some several, uh, or maybe a nice big yellow button or something, and that would be the center. So yeah, yeah. I like that. I think that worked out. No, I think it's a win. Ahead. Definitely a win. Anyway, um, if you didn't hear me before, we've got a an old tutorial on this little soap saver scrubby. If you want to to make that, 
and we've got a free pattern over on our website. So this is such a great little pattern. It's really useful and helpful. It's another nice little thing that, you know, can go a long way in, in the uh, stash of gifts. If you want to make them ahead of time and have some uh, set aside to use as gifts, one of these with a bar of soap is makes a nice little gift. Um, you can also change up the way you do the work in the round. You don't have to join every row with a slip stitch, chain one, single crochet in the same place. You can just single crochet in the round every single row if you want. Lots of, um, of opportunity to kind of fiddle with that. So don't be afraid to, to change it up a little bit if you don't want that little seam um, up, um, appearing. I wanted to do the same concept um, as I did the original tutorial um, because I didn't want to mess with the pattern too much since I was sort of saying, yeah, go get the free pattern because you can do that yourself. So if you want to do it exactly the way I did, you're going to have a little seam. Um, not that that's the end of the world, but if you don't want that seam because you you ra rather everything look nice and smooth all the way around, then don't join your rows with a slip stitch. Do not chain one and single crochet in the same place. You just kind of keep single crocheting in every stitch all the way around. We got a super sticker from Sakura oh, Sue. Thank you, Sue. Oh my gosh, it's a super pair. <laughs> it's a super Superman pair. Superman super pair. pair. Thank you so much, Sue. I appreciate that. And a membership milestone from Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Joanna's been a member for 23 months. Thank you so much, Joanna. Joanna says, Poinsettia would look fabulous on my gift bags. Yes, that's another great place you could use it. Um, okay, so I will definitely whip up a, a little quick recap video on how to make that little poinsettia applique for you guys. I'll try and see see if I, the, the, the light holds. I'll do that this afternoon <laughs> and we'll get that up for you. Maybe that'll be this weekend. We can have that up for you on the weekend so you have a little something to look at. Um, and a gifted membership from Oh my Nico. gosh, Nico! A membership gift fairy ninja. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nico. Holy cow. And DR has won it. Congratulations, DR. Welcome to the family. Oh my gosh, Nico. Thank you so much, you guys. Holy cow. Super supportive group. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Um, so that was today's little uh, live crochet along. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, like I said, free pattern, original tutorial. We'll have that link below. Uh, I will come up with a, a tutorial recap for this little guy so that um, you can refer back to it. You don't have to kind of go sifting through this live stream later. And um, I will probably include some pattern notes on what I did today for this little soap saver scrubby in the live uh, description box. So the description box below this live stream. And I'll also include those notes in the description box of the original tutorial. So if you're over there and you are following that tutorial, but you want to kind of make this slight sort of striped change, I'll include the information there too, just so you don't have to go running around looking for it. Um, Catherine, <laughs> Catherine with a membership milestone. Thank you, Catherine. Catherine's been a member for three months, says, thank you for my gifted membership. A nice Christmas surprise. And it certainly is. Thank you so much, Nico. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, everybody. Um, we're going to call it there. We will see you tomorrow for another live stream crochet along at 11 o'clock Eastern in the morning so if uh if you're available please feel free to pop in and spend some time with us and uh, see what we have cooking on the end of our hook tomorrow mr and stitches do you want to add anything uh no i think you've <laughs> covered it all i was busy typing in the chat tippy typey typey tippity letting everyone know we'll be back tomorrow we will we will be back tomorrow um I, if anyone has any questions in regards to the two projects or at least the bag we can try and grab one or two otherwise we'll see everyone tomorrow yeah have uh if you have any questions or they occur to him later just leave them in the description or i should say in the comment section down below or even on the original tutorial um we do try to get to uh, everybody's comments at least at least once a week sometimes twice if i've got the time so uh, yeah if you've got questions feel free to leave them in the comment section and i will do my best to get back to you all right guys have a wonderful afternoon stay safe stay cozy stay crafty and we'll see you guys tomorrow bye guys bye bye <laughs>